And I'm back with another Star Wars video for the week, or second Star Wars video for the week. So um, this is one I've kind of been alluding to for a while anytime I bring up the subject of Star Wars. So universally speaking, the original trilogy is beloved. The prequel trilogy is universally disliked. There are people who like it, and I respect your opinions for liking it, but it's universally no, many people hate the prequel trilogy. Many people dislike it. In fact, it's why I believe that if the prequel trilogy was at least half as good as the original trilogy, trilogy, Lucas probably would not have sold Star Wars to Disney, and we probably would not be getting Episode Seven coming out in about a month, which would sucks because Episode Seven is looking awesome, and it's really the story we wanted to see. We wanted to see a continuation, not the retelling of something we kind of already hinted at or already knew. So. Yeah, they, the prequels are kind of unnecessary, and they show they are necessary. They're they're long winded. They're horribly written. The, the it's for the most part. I mean, it, it's just, it was just it was a, almost an excuse to just show off the new effects of the age. It was just horrible. With that being said, though, not any, not all, and no movie, save for the few truly shitty pieces of work in the world. No movie is without some good. It's some... When I say redeemable qualities, um, not necessarily redeemable qualities, but... Um, one second. I just want to get my NDP for actor references. Star Wars... We'll go with that one. Oh, uh, the... There we go. Just so I can get actor references here. So, um... Yeah, no movie series is without having some good qualities. Now, I'm sure people have done videos on this before. They'll keep doing videos on it because it's their opinion, and this is my opinion on it. Uh, so the question basically is what we're raising, or what I'm raising here, is that um, what was good about the prequels? What good things existed in the prequels? And so this is my video. I'm going to go I'm gonna go movie by movie by movie. Uh, we're going to start with Phantom Menace, then Clone Wars, then uh, Revenge of the Sith. So let's just get into it. Now, let's touch upon something that's going to be an overarching theme in all the movies, the visual effects. Now, it's clearly CGI, but at the time, especially with Phantom Menace came out in 99, those were groundbreaking. That's still a actually visually very nice looking film. The world you could you did with that. We saw we saw like the palace of Naboo, which he said he used his salt for the waterfalls, just pull it off of like a sheet. That was pretty clever. Uh, seeing the background of Naboo, like the like the underground, like the the planet core, as you know, Bosch Nash put it. That was cool. We see Tatooine in full. We see that giant Colosseum. We see a giant epic space battle done in more CGI form. We get to see more. CGI lets you do gets you away with more things. So visually going through all the films, the CGI is very very impressive. Like Camino and Clone Wars, Genosha, Coruscant. Those are all great looking worlds. Mustafar, Kashyyyk. We got to see Kashyyyk. That was really cool. That um I don't remember the name of the planet Obi Wan fought Grievous on, but it had a bunch of sinkholes. Sinkholes. Uh, sinkholes. That was pretty cool. So visually, the landscaping in all these movies was vi beautiful. Visually beautiful. Um. So yeah, I mean, we we got a little iffy all afterwards, afterwards, but um, yeah. Now, overall, if you compare them, the, the the original films had a more intimate feel, but the new films definitely had a more grand feel to them. So it was definitely definitely something that you could say was a positive about the movies. Now, going into episode one, particularly the casting. If you actually run down the cast, I have Phantom Menace right up right now. We had Liam Neeson. We had you, who was Academy Award winner, I think. Hold on, I'm actually gonna just check that. But Liam Neeson, okay. no, he's a nominee, but I think he might be the actual Academy Award winner. One second. Uh, come on, come on, come on. Uh, well, yep, he's a, he's nominated for one. Okay, one nominated for one Oscar. Uh, but he's an Academy Award nominated actor, Liam Neeson. You had Ewan McGregor, you had Natalie Portman, you had uh, Ian McDermott returning for uh, Palpatine, you had uh, Samuel Jackson, Frank Oz returning. You had a great cast, Jake Lloyd, mm, Jake Lloyd. Uh, you had a great cast, uh, and Anthony Daniels returns for um, C-3PO. Kennedy Baker uh, was in for R2-D. You had a great cast for this film. Problem is the dialogue. The, they, they did the best they could with the dialogue. The dialogue was just shit was just shit. 
The direction was just shit. But it was not these actors' fault. The actors did the best they could. L Liam Neeson, people call him monotone. He does have a bit of a monotone. But when you really think, you break it down, yeah, he's just, he's this aged, um, I think he's like middle-aged, I think they uh, were established. He was, he's this aged warrior who's got a pat on uh, Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor! Again, a positive throughout the... It's one of the things I'll just reference throughout the whole series. Hugh McGregor is one of the only actors throughout the entire series of the prequels who is generally actually pretty good trying to deliver his lines the best he can, the character he is. Especially Revenge of the Sith, which is, again, the only one I'll ever defend as a decent movie. Not great, but a decent movie. But, if, you know, we see him go from Padawan to teacher to master. We see the progression of the story. It's actually the better story than Anakin's story. So Ewan McGregor is, again, another positive of this series. Samuel Jackson he was basically not needed to be in there. for. I mean, he was useless, more or less, in the first one. He's just, hey, I'm Samuel Jackson. I'm Mace Windu. Yeah, you can see me later on the villains, but uh, yeah, I'm Mace Windu. Yoda was still a practical effect. That was pretty cool. Um, the pod racing scene. The pod racing scene was was also really cool. It was fun. It was exhilarating. We had a lot of. We were actually intense. We we're like, he's probably gonna win. But we we're like, is he gonna win? Holy crap! So that was pretty fun. It was very. It was kind of like um, a lot of people kind of compared it to uh, Ben Hur, which yeah, there's a little bit of Ben Hur there. But it was that was fun. And then Darth Maul. I think I'm personally under the opinion Darth Maul was actually the perfect bag. I'm and. Spoiler alert, he's actually still alive in the Expanded Universe in Clone Wars and all that. In the actual canon, he lived that uh, that uh, um, getting cut in half at the end. If you haven't paid attention to Clone Wars or anything like that, that's canon. So he actually survived. We don't know what's happened to him so far because Clone Wars is over. But he did survive. So, but Darth Maul, was, Ray Parker, was awesome as a character. He only had, I think, two, li two lines of dialogue. It's like, uh, it's like, unless we reveal ourselves, unless we'll have revenge. You have been well trained. There should be no match for you. That I think those are the only lines of dialogue that uh, he had, <laughs> and yet he is still a badass character. Now I've heard people say those. He was a horrible. He was a horrible vet guy. He didn't say anything. He was just there to think about the title of the movie. It's the Phantom Menace. It's the reemergence of this enemy, the Sith, and. Palpatine's the main bad Sith. He's the headmaster. He's the guy controlling trains. In fact, Palpatine was actually even the sole apprentice to Sidious at the time. But, or uh, Plagueis at the time. But, Maul represented the reemergence of that enemy. And an enemy powerful enough. He's not even the master. But a power enough to take out and kill a Jedi master on his own. And he's the reemergence of this, he's the reemergence of this threat that needs to be taken care of and handled. So, for that one-shot villain, granted, we would have loved Love to see him continue on through the movie series. It sucks he got axed off, but Darth Maul was awesome. I said, I personally, he represented the reemergence of a villain that needed to be addressed, and he was the perfect kind of just. It was the perfect one shot character that shouldn't have been one shot, but still one shot. He was the perfect one shot character. And then of course the final bit, because let's be, I honestly don't count the battle for Naboo as a positive. It was just kind of boring, and the, uh, over Naboo as well. I, that was that was just kind of like eh. Because Jar Jar, fuck Jar Jar. Um, but of course, the fight between Aunt Obi Wan, Qui Gon Jinn, and Darth Maul. The most badass lightsaber fight among the most badass lightsaber fights in the entire prequel trilogy, honestly. The, one of the most badass lightsaber fights ever put to big screen so far. It was just awesome, especially when you get that duel of the face. <laughs> <laughs> just awesome just, just it's and you know people say that they were too choreographed i'm sorry i i they were choreographed but they were beautifully choreographed it's elegant it's like almost like dancing which you think jedi in their prime would use their force to augment their abilities they wouldn't be so like freaking stern stale or unless you've got that unless that's your fighting style and for those nerds of you, who maybe I'll do a fighting style video and talk about that at one point. There is seven different forms of lightsaber fighting co uh, combat. So, um, some of the styles are a bit more grounded, like um, Vader's... Vader and Luke's styles were definitely more grounded, even though he, Luke uh, incorporated some acrobatics. But um, you look at some, you look at the Jedi back in the day, they all were far more swift and powerful than you say Jedi or, you know, the Force users and the lightsaber users in the um, in the later trilogy, 
in the original trilogy. So that fight, that fight just hands down one of the best things in the entire prequel series. And just, <laughs> just awesome. I get giddy thinking about it. I feel like I'm going to watch it after I'm done. It's just an awesome event. Especially that scene where Darth Maul just goes out and that music just comes out. Boom, 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 boom. I feel, I feel that's how Vader needs to appear in Rogue One where the Rebels are about to escape with the Death Star plans and then Vader just shows up. Boom, boom, boom. Except his head's not down. Just boom, boom, boom. And then it just takes out his lightsaber. Boom, and then just boom, boom, boom. And then just get ready. And then, of course, we get the reveal of the double bladed lightsaber and people are just like, what? But still, it's awesome. And he's just like, Ray Parker is just freaking awesome. Even when he loses, it gets cut in half. He's just like, he's even deadlier with just one lightsaber than a double-bladed lightsaber, because that's actually kind of an impractical weapon to use unless you're a martial arts force wielder like Darth Maul was. But still. <laughs> so those are my positives for Phantom Menace. Now, moving on to Clone Wars... There's less positives than Clone Wars. As I said, I actually talked about two of the big ones. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, still still go good. He's still awesome. Uh, run awesome. He's still very much the best uh, act, one of the best of continu continuing actors in the series for the tri trilogy. Uh, and uh, the visual effects for the worlds. Now, that being said, um, Hayden Christensen as Anakin. Now, I, I actually, if you watch Doug Walker's Nostalgia Critics, all good thing, 11 good things about the prequels, I agree with him when he mentions this about Hayden Christensen. His line delivery is horrible. Just horrible. Oh, man, what, 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 was, what was some of the lines he said? I hate sand. It's coarse and grainy, and it gets everywhere. Uh... <laughs> I was like, oh, I killed them. The women, the children. I can't them. Oh, oh, man. But when he's not talk, Oh, God, that line of dialogue too, between him and Natalie Portman. It's like, you called this diplomatic... You tailed the diplomatic... Um, oh, what was what was the fucking horrible line? You called this a diplomatic solution? I call it aggress aggressive negotiations while they're fighting in Janosh. Oh my god, that was a, oh my god, such a horrible flipping line. Christ on a biscuit, oh man. I'm sorry, I don't mean to, I don't, I don't rarely get sacrilegious, sacrilegious. I'm not even, I'm not very religious, but I, I respect religion, if, you, if you're religious. I don't want to disrespect your religion, I just, still, Christ on a biscuit, man, holy crap, that was a terrible line. But if he's not talking... If you actually just look at his visual expressions and how he's processing things emotionally with just vi vi uh, physical facial features, his facial emotions, he's actually pretty good. He's actually emoting more emotionally through his facial features than he is with his dialogue. So on that standpoint, he's not terrible at all, but when he talks, just, ugh. Um... Really, the only... Uh, Jango Fett was not terrible either. Jango Fett was all right, though we didn't really need the origins of Boba Fett at all. We really didn't. We were like, we're... Like, that was, that was actually something that is more on negative. Jango Fett is cool, but I didn't need to see Boba Fett, really, at all. I didn't need to see a young Boba Fett. That, that was just kind of stupid. Um... Then we get into the basically the last part of the film is basically the best part of the film. The whole Jedi fighting in Genosha, the battle ring, that was pretty cool. That was pretty epic. Uh, we can see Mace Windu fight for the first time. That was because he's got a purple lightsaber just because he wanted a purple lightsaber. That's what George, that's what Samuel Jackson said. Uh, and then of course Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee is a cl such a was such a class actor that he elevated a, a shitty movie like Clone Wars. Which I would even debate might be even worse than Phantom Man Menace, now that I think about that. Oh, I forgot to mention the line in the bar, which is good. And she's like, hey, you want to buy, buy some dust sticks? You don't want to sell me dust sticks. I don't want to sell you dust sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life? I want to go home and rethink my life. That was still very funny. I enjoyed that very much. It's a good scene. Um, but no, Christopher Lee, even with the dialogue he had, he had such a presence and, gra and just gravitas to him as an actor and as a character actor and just an individual that he sold it he sold that character he made that character dignified classy but menacing when and then the fight between him and anakin and obi-wan which honestly you would think that the two lights anakin wielding two lightsabers would make it on the positive that actually makes it on my negative a little bit 
he did not look good using those two lightsabers. That was actually kind of stupid. In fact, that whole fight between him and Dooku was actually not very good. Dude, well, first off, Dooku was still owning his ass, and he was still cool in the fight. He's got the cool curved hilt-bladed lightsabers. He uses force lightning on Anakin because he's a little bitch. And then Obi but Obi-Wan's just standing there. Now, Obi-Wan's a bit more badass, but he's tired from the battle originally, so that's why he gets his ass kicked. And then that just, that um, <laughs> Christopher Lee mocking, just kind of evil grin. He's like, oh, Master Kenobi, you disappoint me. Uh, Master Yoda, I hold you in such a high regard. Surely you can do better. Just awesome. I dug it. He's just so cool. He's Christopher Lee, man. He's so cool. And he can make something as bad as that look cool. And then he just beats them both down and cuts off Anakin's arm. And then Yoda shows up. And fine, And yes, Yoda makes it on my positive. I know not everyone likes it. Yoda makes it on my positive for this. They had to go. They upped it up with CGI. He still looked good, but he was clear he was CGI at this point. And it was a, it was a the actual fight. We got to see him use his lightsaber because you know people were just wondering why would Yoda need a lightsaber. All Jedi carried a lightsaber. All Sith actually carried a lightsaber. Palpatine carried a lightsaber. Sidious carried a lightsaber. Even the most heavy of Force users who relied so almost solely on their Force abilities carried a lightsaber. It's part of your training to build a weapon, of well, the weapon of the Jedi Knight. It's part of your training to build one. So, of course, Yoda has a lightsaber. But it's cool. We didn't really see that coming either. We're just wondering, it's like, okay, it's their fight. It's like, hmm, as dark side I sense you. I've become more powerful than any Jedi. Even you, hmm, much to learn you still have. <laughs> um, I see all, uh, uh, this battle cannot be won by our knowledge of the Force, but a skill with lighter. And then he just... And then... You, just hear it. you see Yoda start kicking ass like a freaking little Muppet, like a Kermit the Frog on just cracks. I am going to use the force on you. <laughs> just awesome. Just cool. Um, so, yeah, that, that's basically it. Other than that, though, I would actually call Clone Wars, because I don't care about the clone troopers at all. I really don't. I didn't. I mean, yes, we see the or. I mean, it's fine to know that's where the origins of the stormtroopers came from, but I don't care about the clone troopers. No clone troopers at all so that's my positive i would actually say i like fit and this is good because i might get in trouble for this but i might say i like phantom menace a bit more than I like clone wars honestly and that sucks because i despite the fact i love maul i like christopher lee better just because he's christopher lee and the yoda fight was pretty cool but still the qui-gon uh obi-wan maul fight still kicks ass and it's better than that um the only one that art rivals it would be the fight in the third one between obi-wan and anakin and that's because of the raw emotion and just the raw intensity of that fight. And, and that's a positive for the third one. Moving on to the third one, this is where I actually get into more positives and neg ones, cause, negatives. Because it would be my favorite of the three. Uh, we, that's opening space battle is very awesome in the first one. Um, it's, it's a very cool fight scene. Uh, just air battles, and then they get on the street. That whole opening scene with them trying to save uh, Senator, Pal uh, Senator Palpatine, Sidious from uh, Grievous and Dooku was pretty it was pretty good. The fight between them and Dooku was really good. Uh, that whole opening scene, really, with Grievous and that whole sh uh, scene between the, uh, between starting and landing back on Coruscant was a really damn good scene. It was. I, I could go bit by bit by that, but yeah, it was a really good scene. Uh, Hayden, Christensen, Hayden Christensen, again, or is it Christensen? I think it's Christensen. But Hayden... Um, he was better in this than he was in the second one. That's for certain because he's got because this is where the turn for Anakin happens. This is where he goes to the dark side. Now, grant the motivation, a little hit and miss, but you know it's still this is where the real, um, real bad shit goes down, and we see the turmoil on his face again when he's not talking. He's vi oh god, like the well, like on the line is like I have brought peace to my new empire. Oh man! Now I gotta understand if, a couple of the actually a couple of the scenes where he's sh like screaming his lines was not terrible. Grant the way I think it's just his voice, honestly. It's like you will you turn it against me. You will not take it from me. Like that that wasn't terrible, but that's just expressing his rage and hate when he's like saying I hate you. You know that 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 was just that worked for the scene it was in. But when he's just visually expressing stuff, you can see the pain. The turmoil, the resolve, all that. You can see that on his face. It's pretty good. He's pretty solid when he's doing that. Obi-Wan, again, pretty damn good. This is, like, really the Obi-Wan who's kind of, like, now a tired warrior. He's still young, but he's in his prime, more or less. But he's a tired warrior. 
and you just see like all the stress and weight on his shoulders at this point. Um, now um, going on to some a couple other things. Now again, I don't care about Padme and Anakin's relationship at all. But um, we we see the fall of the Jedi, the ex execute order sixty six. I believe it was sixty six. Uh, and you know, yeah, or it was a twenty six. I don't know. It was it was something along those lines. I think it was sixty six. That was pretty cool. Just seeing the like the, the gunning down of the Jedi. <laughs> How one of them is there in like this weird, oddly enough, Alice in Wonderland esque force, and she gets gunned down. And they just keep shooting your corpse. <laughs> I was like, holy crap! That was pretty. That was dark. Uh, and then General Grievous. I'm a big fan of General Grievous. I liked him a lot. I thought he was a cool... I mean, he was a one-shot bad guy, and I don't like how he's portrayed in the Clone Wars very much, but I liked him as a villain. He was actually a pretty cool villain. You know, he's this mechanical, almost complete android, but he's, he's still a cyber. He's got biological parts, which is why he lost. But he's, he's a Jedi killer. He's one of the most prolific Jedi killer in the in that era. He's killed multiple Jedi. He collects their lightsabers. He goes... His four lightsabers, multiple... One on one with Obi-Wan, who was able to, you know one up him just, 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 just ah just, ah why jenna go to kenobi screw you <laughs> so yeah I, like, I have been trained in your jedi arts but i mean my voice is not as good as what it actually is i thought he was actually a pretty cool bad guy myself i'm not i know not everyone likes general Grievous. i do i think the name is what kind of some people don't like don't, and he will be showing up in one of my Who Would Wins. As I mentioned in one of my last videos, the Who Would Wins from now to the Force Weeks will have at least one Star Wars character in him, so he'll be showing up in Who Would Wins. Uh, in a Who Would Win, anyway. Um, and then, of course, the fight between Palpatine, uh, Sidious, and uh, Mace Windu, that was epic. And then the final turning is like, POWER! UNLIMITED POWER! And, of course, let's just, let's just get it out of the way. Ian McDermott... Was was uh, good in all the movies, more or less. But my God, that he's does he go the full hog wild in the final one? Oh my God, is he amazingly over the top and awesome? <laughs> no, no, you will die, <laughs> my little master Yota. How unexpected you survived. <laughs> my zed for you, my little green friend. Just that cackling. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, just, and that fight between him and Yoda. Just uh, That was actually pretty badass. Yoda just being like, if so strong you are, why leave? <laughs> it's just like, badass. That fight on the Senate is awesome. Them just like throwing the Senate at each other, man. That was great. <laughs> Honestly, I think Yoda actually could have killed uh, Sidious if he really hadn't, uh, if he hadn't lost his ground. Honestly, really, he was just kind of, he, I know why, if people ask the question why, if he can use the force to move like that, does he need a cane, if he's so fit, he's not actually that fit. He augments his physical pro body with the force, and I heard a great example, it's kind of like putting NOS in your engine. Um, it's going to run the engine out quicker and just cause it to burn out quicker. It's kind of the same thing with Yoda. His body is old. He's over 700. Or he's nearly 800 years old at that point. If you actually think about it, Yoda dies at the end of Re Return of the Jedi, which takes place, I think, three, five years in total after A, a New Hope, I think. So, I think. So, and then uh, episode uh, New Hope takes place about, you just got to go by Luke's age, really. I think he's like 22 or 25. So it takes about 30 years, so it's overall it's 35 years. Yoda was actually, if you really look at his species, Yoda lives, species levels were extremely old. Again, eight, eight, over 800 years old, Yoda died at. Um, his species was long. He was actually kind of approaching the, excuse the dogs in the background. Those aren't my dogs. Um, those were That was actually him reaching basically the end of his life. So it makes sense that his body really was not all that fit. <clears throat> and then... Um, just thinking about any other real positives besides the final fight. Um, no, I mean, all we're seeing... Um, I can't say it's a negative, but I can't say it's a positive. Seeing Chewbacca wasn't really... That was actually more really just forced. That was actually pretty forced seeing Chewbacca in there. It's like, Chewbacca knows Yoda? What? I No, no, what? Chewbacca knows Yoda? Why did you not... Uh, why, like... Did Yoda? I don't actually. I don't think Luke ever brought Yoda up to Han or Chewie. So that that's one of those throwaway lines that would have been like, "Yo, I'm gonna go just see this guy named uh, Dego, a second named Yoda." And then Chewbacca would have just been, like, "What? You know him, Chewie?" It's like, 
Milk was like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that. Actually, that's a good question. Actually, I'll save that for a different video entirely, uh, whether we'll see a Force ghost in uh, Force Awakens or not. Um, or maybe in the next, in the trilogy. But other than that, though, um, yeah, the only other good positive is that final fight between Anakin and Obi-Wan. <clears throat> and, yeah, it's pretty badass. We see the turmoil these two brothers basically had, and they're brothers. They're, they're basically, you were my brother, Anakin, I loved you! It's, yeah, you really see the, the hurt that goes through these guys for having to fight each other, and it sucks. And we see how, how, it came to, uh, how it came down to. Honestly, though, um... Obi-Wan should have done the human... If he was his brother, Obi-Wan should have done the humane thing and just put him out of his misery instead of burning the fucking death. But whatever. <sighs> so, and because like, I'm not... And I'm not going to count the Darth Vader thing because, as we all know, the... No! Why would you put that on a positive list? No. <laughs> now, seeing the, the Death Star being built at the very end of this uh, the movie was actually pretty cool. Uh, and then the, him dropping Luke off at Uncle Owens, who was played by, a, uh, not Ewan McGregor, wow, that was, that was Obi-Wan, it was played by Joel Edgerton, I, I didn't even know that, wow, he was only in there for a scene, <laughs> Joel Edgerton can say, I was in a Star Wars movie, yeah, you know, look at my stand-up performances, young Uncle Owen, I am amazing, so, and it's getting dark, I grant, it's not terribly dark yet, I've still got some light on me, but, uh, it's getting dark, yeah, because of, uh, fall back we gotta oh, fall back to clock turn back to clock so it's getting dark now it's almost five and five o'clock's pretty, pretty dark around here so um but yeah so there are positives about the prequels there are but there's so many negatives that outweigh them i don't want to do i'm not going to do a list of what the negatives about the four, uh, prequels are because that would be stupid because we all know i mean we all have different opinions of what was bad but we all generally agree on the main bad things Jar Jar, the dialogue, the acting a lot of the time, plot points that make no sense, just overall just a lot of bad shit that goes down in this. But yeah, so that's my thoughts on what was good in the prequels. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, subscribe. I'm going to go see Spectre tonight. I'll have a review of that up probably later when I get home. And I'll probably go see Peanuts tomorrow. I uh, will have a Who Would Win Up either tomorrow or Saturday. And I've got a review for Warcraft trailer tomorrow to do. So I got a couple things to do still for this week. So thanks for watching. See you next.